Hello there and welcome to this casual educational video. It's all about the discount rate, therefore it's going to be a relatively short video. Now, as we all know, the discount rate plays a huge role in the discounted cash flow model and a slight change to it can have a huge impact on the outcome. Now, of course, I'm not going to go through all of the discount rates that are out there available. Instead, I want to focus on the two most widely used ones. On one side, we have the subjective rate. And if you follow other YouTube channels, I'm sure you've came across this one when where they use 20% or 40%. And the subjective rate normally represents the return that they want to achieve over the long run. Sometimes a margin of safety could be added there. So if somebody is aiming for 20%, they might be discounting with 25 or 30% just to be on the safe side. If you're following this channel, then you know that I'm using the weighted average cost of capital because I want to get to the intrinsic value of the company. And now if you have the question, well, isn't that also the case with the subjective rate? I'd like to answer that question through an example. Let's imagine that we have two individual investors that have the same financial model, that they're discounting the same free cash flow. So it's the same company that they're valuing or trying to value, although value is not the correct term in this case, and I want to make that point. They have the exact same free cash flow because they have the same revenue assumptions, the same margins, the same reinvestments. The only difference in their models is the discount rate. So if individual one, individual A uses the 10% discount rate, the outcome in his or her model will be higher than in the second individual that uses 20%. None of them represents the value of the business. The value of the business doesn't care whether we want 20% return on our investment or 40%. The value of the business doesn't change because of that. The difference between these two individuals and the outcomes is that if they want the 10% or the 20%, they should be paying different prices. So the outcome of our model when we're using a subjective rate is how much should I be willing to pay for this business to get the 10% return or the 20% return. Now there's a trap if you have a very risky business and you're, you, there's no way to measure that because when, you, when you're using the subjective rate, it's just the same rate. It could be that we're using a subjective rate that's too low compared to the riskiness of the business. And therefore it might seem like an attractive business. In fact, it we could be making a bad decision. On the other side, if we want a too high rate of return, if, if we're trying to get a 40%, we might end up not buying anything because everything will seem too expensive, but not overvalued. And that's a key distinction to make. Now I'm using the weighted average cost of capital because it takes so many different factors into account. I have to say it's not the perfect model, but it's the best one that's available out there at the moment at least that's my opinion. If we take a look at the cost of equity, the way that's calculated, of course, it takes the beta, it takes the volatility of the company. We have the different capital structure taken into account. So there are all of these factors and the outcome of this model, if we're using a weighted average cost of capital is how much is the company worth based on our assumptions about the revenue growth, about the margins, about the reinvestments. And that is different. So. To summarize these two rates, the subjective rate is very easy to calculate. Actually, it's not even being calculated. We just make it up based on our required rate of return, but it doesn't take risk into account. And the outcome of it is how much am I willing to pay for this company to get the return that I want? On the other side, the weighted average cost of capital can take some time to calculate. It does take risk into account and it leads to the intrinsic value of the company. So we need to make this distinction and oftentimes one of the mistakes that I notice is um, if uh, actually I don't want to call anyone out, but there are certain content creators that have a model in Excel and they keep changing the subjective rate and they're referring that the outcome uh, of their model is the value of the company, which is not correct. So that is the only thing that we need to make sure to, to differentiate. One is the outcome of the first one is the price that we should pay to get the rate of return. The second one is how much the value of the business is. Um, 
this is a little bit of a different video than the ones I normally make. I normally the ones that I publish are valuation videos. But I notice that certain times there are certain questions again in this area that are repeating not only on this channel but also on other channels. And when I notice these topics, I try to address them in a video. I think it's a bit of a better um, way to, to answer that other than replying to the same question through email multiple times. But if you have other questions or other topics around finance or valuations that seem challenging or you have uh, it's, it's unclear or you, you would like to understand better, feel free to reach out to me and the moment I see that there are many questions repeating, I'll cover them in a video such as this one. I'll try to keep them sh as short as possible, but still informative enough so that uh, there's value to be extracted. Thanks for following this video until the very end. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.